passengers whom they will carry, but for joy and relief they have brought to the men by whom they were built. In its constructive aspect, the aeroplane makes possible some of the most remarkable feats of humanity, as in bringing to the screen from faraway Dacia, these are the first authentic pictures of an actual war operation in Abyssinia. But these very pictures which illustrate the commercial uses of the aeroplane prove it also to be one of the most potent agents of death which man has invented for himself. Behind the Italian lines, it is known that the Emperor Haile Selassie has now moved up to his northern headquarters at Desi, and it is decided to bomb the little strategic town 150 miles north of Addis Ababa, on which the Nagus and his forces are concentrated. So Italian squadrons take the air, and in due course appear over their objective. Then for one hour, hell is let loose. The first bomb falls with a shattering detonation. It is followed by others in swift succession, and the havoc is on. The advent of the aeroplanes had not been unobserved, and the emperor with his young son had quickly left the improvised palace where they had spent the night. On this palace it is said that one of the incendiary bombs fell. The wails of the wounded added to the din of the explosions, and Red Cross units moved swiftly to the succor of the victims. But the Red Cross hospital came itself under bombardment, as this shot proves. The Italians state that they were ignorant of the existence of the hospital, operated under American auspices. But the Abyssinians allege that Italy formerly had a commercial agent in Desi, who must have been well aware of its location. Fires, of course, followed the explosions and made the work of rescue more difficult. After an hour's destruction and carnage, the aeroplanes withdrew, and the survivors breathed freely once more. Among them came the Emperor to visit and cheer the wounded and to signify his respect for the dead. The numbers of the victims had been given variously, but here you may see the validity of the reports of considerable casualties and may mourn with us the fact that these terrors should recur in a world which desires above all things peace.